All right. So here I am walking to the 2022 Performance Racing Industry Show in Indianapolis, Indiana. It's a gloomy day. Weather's been like that here. Not too cold this past years. This is great to be back here. Been gone for two years. I haven't come back. I've been going since like the early 90s to the show and I really do miss it. I hope to see a lot of exciting stuff here. So come along with me and let's see what I can find and dig up for my viewers. And again, thanks everybody for watching. Really appreciate it. Let me check. So Marty here is going to talk to me about uh, wires. Gas or about conductors. Conductors? So the key is the conductor. It's the conductor? The center of the wire. We'll go over here. Conductor is the key. By the way, Marty is Woody Harrelson's brother. Yeah. <laughs> so we're talking about conductor. Wire conductor is key. Okay. This is our 30 gold wire. All right. So 30 ohms resistance. The conductor here is the finest you can buy in the industry. Uh, like a Super 40 Moroso, the 40 is 40 ohms resistance. So mm. this has less resistance, higher conductivity, and the best thing about our wires is the noise suppression. You do not get noise for all your electronics. So what that leads to is this wire right here goes on this engine right over here, which is a Childress uh, NASCAR engine with, as you can see, a, you couldn't put any more electronics on an engine. So if the wire was not capable of delivering a hot spark with no noise, it would not be on this engine. This is the worst environment for a spark plug wire known to man because underneath the hood of a Winston Cup car, it is hot. So well, you is, got a lot of computers going on, a lot of wires. Well, the computers are in the car, but I mean, the headers, uh, the headers are right here. Everything is tight, you know, right. and confined the belly of the car there's no air getting in so it is a very very hot environment thank you very much for that so if it can survive here it can survive on your street car that is the same wire we will sell you that goes on this engine right here this is the creme de la creme we have a row of engines here uh, that right down there is a uh, oh come here i'll show you yeah NASCAR truck spec engine. Would you say it's a Hill? Uh, Ilmore. Ilmore. Yeah, Ilmore Engineering. Right. Right. So we also do Wagner's engines here. So they sell LSs by the truckloads. They use all our wires. We have a Mullins engines over here, which is a, uh, a dirt car engine. They they do about 300 new engines a year. Mm -hmm. They are a very large engine manufacturer. All of these are using the same wire that you can use on your street car. The cost-wise, they are competitive with anybody on the market, which is really, now you're just talking about MSD, Taylor, or uh, Moroso. Do you sell sets for them? Like we sell sets. We have part numbers for sets for your common engines. We can make anything custom. You can go online and do... Can you uh, make your own wire kit? Make your own wire, yep. So right. you go online, you just give me the links you want, the boot you want on the plug-in, whether you want straight 9045, and then what cap you have. And so you got AGI cap style here. Mm -hmm. We can make it there, we can make it straight, we can make it 90, and it'll have the Scott wire. Okay. If, if you order the wire with the, the heat suppression sleeve. So that's a fiberglass sleeve wrapped in silicone. It's pretty thick. Yeah, it's pretty thick, but right. it's uh, I'm light, though. super heat. Yep. Super heat resistant. Snaps in nice, too? Yep. Okay. yep. So if you look at, speaking of snapping in nice, <laughs> Our, we have a special one made that has this clip, this band around it. Mm -hmm. that, that's what gives you that tight fit. Right. It comes back to the conductivity. You can't have conductivity through the wire if you don't have conductivity through the post on the cap or at the 
plug itself. Right. So as we know, an engine makes horsepower by a large explosion. The larger the explosion, the more horsepower you make. Well, when, when you're trying to compress air and fuel, the, when you light the spark plug, it has resistance. So the least, the, the most amount of power you can get to the spark plug, the bigger boom you're going to make, the more horsepower you're going to make. So the simple little things do matter, and it all helps to make your engine go faster and to have a product that's going to last forever. Great. Thank you, Marty. You're welcome very much. Thank you, Paul. So this clamping system works if you're doing like sheet metal work. It's very cool. You've got these pliers that pull it back, and a man that's showing you these are very heavy. I tried them and show them how they, they clamp the metal there. So now if you're doing any type of welding work on thin sheet metal, look at this, it holds it in place. Is that cool or what? Look at that. I'm gonna get me some of these. Thanks. Look how cool this is. Look at this billet intake manifold. Hey, can you tell me a little bit about this billet intake manifold here? This is an amazing piece. It's a one solid billet chunk. Uh, yes, actually, a uh, newer design. Our owner just came out with John. Um, basically, it's three pieces. It's three pieces? Yes, sir. Yep, so split right here, O ring to connect and seal. Okay. Um, third piece is the belly right here, all bolted together. That's 100% the aluminum T6061. So it's actually split here in o mm -hmm. yes, and and, what, and over here? No. So the split actually falls right there. Right here? Yes, sir. Wow. You don't even see it. No. Once you once you get them together, how's it going, Mr. Purvis? Good, how are you? Uh, no, once you get them together, the seam almost uh, kind of dissipates and fades itself right up. Amazing. It's amazing. Uh, but this one's specific to the DN9. We've got a 9,000 series. How long does it take to machine something like this? A couple days. A couple days? Yep. Well, that's still amazing, though. Yes. You know, with high-speed machines today, that's pretty interesting that it could take only a couple of days to do this when you think so about it. It's a lot of chips. Considering a 250-pound block of aluminum. Yeah. So it starts at a 150-pound block of aluminum. Gentlemen. Can I ask you a question on this? Certainly. So you got the thermal barrier ceramic coating. Yep. And what is on the side over here? A lubricating coating, a solid film. The, like a molly type of coating or something? In that neighborhood. Yeah. Right. So you got ceramic and then a lubricating coating. Yep. It comes out beautiful. Yep. Nice. Do you do this stuff yourself or you send it out to a company that actually has the machines to do this? We do it. Uh-huh. So we got a three-speed transmission. Old gear set comes out. Just taking these bolts off the, off the black plate, the whole thing will slide out once you take the forks off. Pretty slick design by Rolltip. That's right, it's a NASCAR transaxle. A lot of people don't realize that all the NASCAR cars that are in that series all run transaxles now, made by X-Track, assembled in the United States in Mooresville, North Carolina. Beautiful workmanship. Shout out to the guys in Mooresville who put these together. And the engineering work on these is unbelievable. I mean, right down to the hardware. See this hardware over here they have here? They machine all the special hardware. Low profile, still can be safety wired or they can put tags on them for ratios. This is your input now, below. This is a Quetzal shifter on the top. Obviously this is where your axles come out, go down to the frame. So that's it guys, so that's what it looks like. It's what's in all the new NASCAR vehicles and the chassis and all the components to rig this thing up are all in the new car. That's how it works. Hope you like that one.
All right, so I'm at Neil Chance Racing Converters, and Doug here is going to tell me all about their converters. These are really interesting converters, the way they're designed, where they bolt together, heavy application use. What are these primarily used for? Uh, the, the converters that we build, we mainly use in drag cars, drag, uh, drag racing. Uh, we do a lot of no prep, street racing, uh, mud pulling. We have a lot of them in a lot of different applications, but primarily it's drag racing. Okay, uh, so it's a very unique because they bolt together, right? Heavy yeah. duty, so there's no welded converters anymore like you would normally see on the street converters, a lot of the basic street converters. And I think I saw the other day you had the different types of fins that different angles, right? For Yeah, this is the stator. The right. stator you know, so that's going to be splined to your, your yeah. transmission. It's splined on the stator support tube by your diode here. This right. is what keeps the stator stationary to make stall speed and spin to help the efficiency. Well, we can change the blade angle and the blade count to manipulate the stall speed or, or slippage in the converter to help get the motor you know, where it needs to be into the power band. Um, you know, then we also have a, a pump side this, of the converter has a different fin, fin angle also. You right. can change that to loosen or, you know. So you can, it's almost like modular, right? You right. Can, you can go back and forth with yeah. different ones. I think I saw one that had the actual degrees of the, the fins that you were welding yeah. on. That was like, this one like over here. This one, we, this is a, a converter core that we stamp. Uh, right. We mark, you know, what fin angle it is. So and that's this angle out here. Right. It's 30 degrees. So, we so have a 10, a 20, and a 30 in this. And the more angle, the more aggressive the converter right. is? Yeah, the tighter it is. Yeah. Right. Or less slippage you would have. You're going to have less slippage, yeah. right. Lower the stall speed. Right. These are something else. And they're all made out of uh, billet. Yeah, this is the billet steel. This is just a stamped steel. Right. That we have stamped. Then we got billet aluminum. Right. Uh, then we have a titanium also. A titanium. Is you know, there an advantage titanium. why you would need to have a billet steel one over a billet aluminum one? Um, something that builds a lot of heat, we don't use billet steel. Or we okay. don't use billet aluminum, we use a billet steel just because the aluminum gets soft as it gets hot. So gotcha, so there threaded. could be some distortion. Right, it's also with, threaded, so right. you don't want to lose a thread. Right, so, so that's the advantage of, yep. of the billet but steel, it can handle the heat yeah. more, create less distortion, yep. and, and, and less, obviously if you put it in there, it's going to yeah. have issues for it like So if that. you have to have a lightweight turbo deal, we like so we have a titanium drive cover. For and it. how are they sealed together? Then? There's a, a square cut O-ring, like right. on this one, it's, it goes against here. Right, so it goes against this perimeter right over here, like that. Okay, they, they just fit on, this is for a nine inch, but it fits kind of. Right, okay, so I see the idea. Yeah. Right. So it just fits in that cavity. Right, fits in that cavity. And it's a perfect machine fit, yep. perfect accuracy, yep. that's it. So thanks a lot, Doug, no from the old chance. Now you know about converters, everybody. For your turbo guys, Borg Warner's here with the turbos. All different types of selections. Very cool stuff to look at. I'm not really a turbo person, but here it is. That guy was great. Just some sort of reaction time testing machine rig. Pretty funny. I just wonder how this thing must sound when it's fired up. Look at the turbos on this car and the way it's set up. It's actually, the plumbing is just very artistic. That's all I could say. Totally crazy. Lots of vendors selling safety equipment here, and uh, this is the race quick booth. We've got the seats, the belts, helmets, straps. Check it out. Looking back out here, I'm sure.
shirt here in a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Yeah. This is what I'm talking about. Who needs a couch when you got something like this? Why would you want to have anything but chairs like this in your house? They're comfortable, they hug you, they almost caress you. I really like this. Time to redecorate. So PRI has got all sorts of forms of you know, motorsport racing. And these guys specialize in bodies for circle track type cars, that type of stuff, dirt, roundy rounds, some people call it. They make all the composite bodies for these types of outlaw cars. All right, Charles, I want to know what this donk thing is all about. All right. What is donk? So a donk is a 71 to 76 Chevrolet Caprice or Impala. That's the only... So it's got to be a Caprice or an Impala. Right, that's a dunk. So a lot of people get confused with big rims and dunks. A dunk is the car. Okay. So you put big rims on a, on a Monte Carlo or whatever, it's not a dunk. It's not a dunk. It's so got to be... So the NDRA, we have two weight classes we focus on, which is the G-Body class and the dunk class. We have middleweight and heavyweight class. So the NDRA is actually its own sanctioned racing body. So okay. It's a whole... We got an eight-car minimum on most of our classes, and we get a lot of participants. So we're here at PRI um, this week. We were at SEMA a few like a month ago. Or right. So. so yeah, Dunk Master is actually the CEO of the NDR. Okay. He drives the 71 Impala on 26-inch Ruchis, and also he drives the 87 Monte Carlo on. It's like I'm seeing, like I just saw a G body like a uh, Malibu go by there. That's not a Dunk though. No, it's a G body. It's a G body. G body on big wheels. Yeah. Right. So like I said, the only thing that's a Dunk. The 71 to 76 Chevy Caprice on Impala. Wow. And do they have to have a certain size rim to qualify for being? Yeah. So for, for the G body, you gotta have a 24 inch slick, and then for the so this is this this is a dunk. Yeah, that's a dunk. This is it, this man. Is 71 Impala. 71 Impala. Look at these freaking yeah, so, wheels. So the so the race in the the dunk class, you gotta have a 26 inch hard tire. What do you mean by hard tire? Like street tire. Street tire. It gotta be street. It gotta be street. So for the G body class, it gotta be a 24 inch slick. Awesome. <laughs> that is wild. Yeah, see, a lot of people don't even know. So a lot of it's fiberglass. It just looks. It's glass, huh? Yeah. So you have somebody molding the, the panels for these? Oh, yeah. That's amazing. Charles, thank you so much. Yeah, if you wanna see more on Big Wheel Racing, make sure you follow uh, Dunk Master TV on YouTube or G Dog 803 and then all of our social media. One underscore dunk master NDRA US and NDRA USA. Thank you. Man. All right, so I've seen this company Sand Eve before, but they got this whole retrofit of their drift racing transmissions into a Corvette transaxle deal. I really like the way they do the black finish and the laser etching of quality control. Just adds a nice touch of professionalism to the transmission. And uh, typically these inline transmissions here, they give you the specs on them for you guys. So circuit racing, 502 foot pounds, hill climb, 885 foot pounds, drift, 885 foot pounds, rally, 443 foot pounds. Now notice the difference in ratings for different race applications. And that's because these different race applications put different stresses on the car's transmission. It's important to know. Ah. My hands are feeling a little bit dirty. Hey, can I grab one of those towels? Can I, hey, Marcus. Can I grab one of those towels? Are there, it, there is an actual towel in there. Oh, it's oh. It's just, because they're wet wipes. Uh huh. But, so, but, yeah, sorry. Oh. This is a very cool way of mounting coil packs. They got the coil packs mounted on the outside, wires feed underneath. That's a very clean installation. You know, in this day and age, there are so many different clutch setups, different flywheels to use, 
that inevitably, if you're using a concentric hydraulic release bearing on your car, you may end up with setup issues. And that seems to be the, one of the most common problems where people aren't getting enough clutch release because the gap between the release bearing and the clutch fingers is either you know, very far away or sometimes you can prematurely wear out the clutch diaphragm fingers if the release bearing is too close and you overextend the fingers. So I was just walking around and I came across a booth with a company called Tick Performance. And I'm going to show you some of the neat setups they have for adjusting clutch release, specifically on GM cars that have the standard two bolt release bearing that's bolted to the front bearing retainer of like a T56 or even some of the earlier T5s that had it. I want you to check this out. All right, so here is this neat little tool here. These pieces are for different bell housings, different width bell housings, right? Probably this one is for a performance small diameter bell housing. This is for a standard bell housing. These holes here, you would put your dial indicator on. And these little posts here replace your bell housing. So these pieces would go in like this on either side, right? And they kind of have the stand, these are your standoffs that replace the standard height of your bell housing. And then this goes in the middle, and then you have your indicator that you indicate on your fingers. Once you get that set, then you do the height on your release bearing on the transmission. Now these shims here that they sell, all sorts of different sizes, will go behind the release bearing, the typical two bolts that hold the release bearing in place on the bearing retainer, and thus you can set up your air gap on the release bearing properly so you have good clutch release and don't overextend your clutch fingers. This is from Tick Performance. Okay, I'm with Mike, and he's going to quickly tell me all the different types of these Liberties boxes. Go. Ultra lightweight, Pro Stock Z, EZ, Extreme, Extreme T. Unbelievable. And this is the one that's got the torque converter drive for that's in this car over here. All right, guys, this is the floor and sh tunnel shield, too. It's got a self-adhesive backing, and this radiates heat for heat protection from design engineering. So the little demo here shows it's stuffed way into this heat lamp over here. Inside is 451 degrees. Could you believe it? And the shield is producing 85 degrees on the top. That's impressive. All right, everyone. First, there are bicycle cards on your spokes. Remember that? Putting bicycle cards on your spokes to get that sound you wanted. And then if you grew up in the 60s or 70s, you might have seen the Mattel Baroon, which was a little plastic motor you put on your tricycle or your bike that gave you the sound of a motorcycle. You turn with a little dial on it. But now today, we have the solution for the new vehicle, the new EV vehicle, the Borla, sound like heaven, go like hell. A simple system you plug in, okay, with an app and some speakers, and you can turn your Tesla into sounding like a Mustang GT or a Chrysler Hellcat or a truck or something space age, whatever. What do you think about that? I'm just like looking at this car here and looking at how lightweight everything is. Look at this. We got a lower control arm. We got a diameter of the tubing. And it's like just all the necessary stuff. Keep it light, keep it fast.